Hi, everyone. On behalf of the Korean Society of Cardiology, I would like to thank uh, APSC and Dr. Issei Komuro for, for the invitation to present um, in the Asia Pacific Leadership Series. My name is Kyung Woo Park, uh, the Director of International Affairs uh, at KSC, and I'm going to talk about the future of healthcare and car cardiology in Korea. Uh, as you uh, well know, one of the biggest megatrends in healthcare uh, globally um, is aging. Uh, by 2050, the aged population is projected to double as compared to 2020 and will account for approximately 16% uh, of the world's population. Uh, this trend is especially true for Asian countries such as Korea, China, and Japan. And of the three, uh, Korea is projected to go from an aging society to a super aged society in, in only just 25 years, uh, the fastest uh, pace in human history, where it took other Western countries several more decades. Uh, this will put a lot of burden on society in terms of controlling the cost of healthcare. Healthcare is very unique that it has a, a iron triangle where the three keys are, are good quality, um, broad access, uh, and low cost. Uh, this is a target for all health systems. However, in reality, uh, it may be possible to reach two of the three goals, but impossible to reach all three goals. For example, you can have high quality healthcare and have universal access, but this will result in an enormous uh, cost. We need to find cost-effective ways of delivering healthcare. And I believe that this is where innovation uh, and new technology may have a role. We now live in the area of the fourth industrial revolution. The major drivers of innovation in the fourth industrial revolution uh, are the three C's, computing power, uh, connectivity, and convergence. More specifically, what will drive um, um, innovation in healthcare? I believe it will be AI, computing power, and big data. Uh, robotics and robotic process automation, uh, connectivity and 5G telecommunications, digital sensor-based telehealth, and the pandemic uh, and telemedicine. So let's start off with AI computing power and big data. Big data uh, and, and analytics are now part of our lives. 20 to 30 years ago in baseball, you would have never um, seen this kind of formation where the shortstop and third baseman are all on the right side of uh, the diamond. But nowadays, um, data analytics tells us that the, the, the batter probably, the batter's probability to hit the ball to the left side of the infield is near zero. And that is why they are using this type of um, form, uh, formation. Also, it is now very natural for us to rely on big data analytics to recommend what to eat, what to wear, and even what to read. Healthcare is no exception. Uh, Lunit is a Korea-based uh, radiology imaging company that relies on AI to help doctors detect abnormal imaging findings. Also, colleagues from our Seoul National University Pundang Hospital have shown that an um, AI um, clinical decision support system based on a hybrid approach of knowledge, so a combination of expert-driven knowledge acquisition and data-driven uh, knowledge acquisition can help non-heart failure specialists better diagnose heart failure. What about interventions? Um, computing power now enables us to make FFR measurements from CT images through a computational um, model. Dr. BK Gu um, from Seoul National University Hospital is one of the pioneers of this field in the world and his Discover Flow uh, trial was one of the pivotal trials to get uh, EU and FDA approval for CTFFR measurement. You can see from this example that previously we would have seen the CT and in both cases we would have performed invasive angiography and then have measured invasively uh, FFR and then in this case we would have gone through with PCI and then in this case we would have deferred PCI and performed medical treatment. However, with the FFR CT, we can now go directly from the CT images and compute the, uh, the CT FFR. Uh, and in this case, we would have gone to, um, forward with um, invasive angiography and in PCI. And in the lower example, uh, we would have um, not gone 
to P PCI and invasive angiography. And therefore we would have prevented an unnecessary uh, invasive coronary angiography. Next is robotics. Our surgical colleagues have long embraced this technology. Um, and recently the first robotic um, surgical animal operation was uh, successfully performed with the support of 5G telecommunications uh, technology uh, in China. Now for PCI, a company named Corindus is actively de uh, developing the robotic PCI equipment where an interventionist can sit on a chair away from the radiation exposure and perform a uh, PCI. In a comparison of nearly 1,000 patients, the 310 patients that received robotic PCI had similar clinical outcomes and a significantly reduced radiation exposure, despite the fact that the total procedure time was a little bit longer uh, in the P robotic PCI group due to the learning curve. And in, a, in an uh, accompanying editorial, the, the authors uh, projected that the development of remote PCI technology promises to increase access to care in underserved uh, regions of the world. Also with the, uh, with the help of um, LG Electronics, uh, our hospital, Seoul National University Hospital, helped develop um, the Chloe delivery robot, which can deliver samples to anywhere within our hospital. The next profound, um, uh, next area with profound impact will be connectivity and 5G telecommunications. Because 5G, um, gener the fifth generation telecommunications technology has ultra low lat latency and large bandwidth, the connectivity between and uh, within the hospitals will be stronger than ever. One area where this is making an impact um, is um, the ICU, where connectivity allows for smaller hospital to be connected uh, with the larger ICUs um, and for the specialists uh, in the larger hospital to have real-time access to monitoring data um, uh, of patients uh, in the smaller ICUs. Also, just imagine if we had hundreds of those delivery robots that I just um, explained, and instead of having the CPU of the robots in the robots themselves, uh, and in which case uh, we would have to reprogram each robot every time some direction had changed or a new hospital wing opened up, uh, instead we can have the master brain uh, and the eye uh, of the robot uh, in the cloud and have all of the robots respond individually to the orders of the brain um, located in the cloud through 5G uh, connectivity. Also, hyperconnectivity allows for real-time use of augmented reality. And, it, and a good example would be, would be the HoloLens 2 uh, from Microsoft. Research, uh, researchers from Microsoft and Philips are working together to develop um, an you know, augmented reality image guided therapy platform called the um, Azurion. Uh, and this will be a huge advance um, for interventionists in the cath lab. How about digital sensor-based telehealth? Well, you know that app, the, well, you know that the Apple Watch is now a healthcare um, device that can detect your heart rate um, and help you help in the detection of atrial fibrillation, which was shown in the Apple Heart Study. Uh, and you know that if Apple can do it, definitely uh, Korea Samsung can do it as well. The Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 can detect pulse, blood pressure, ECG, uh, and also oxygen saturations, all from your wrist. The various solutions, um, including those from Alive Core uh, and also CardioSolo, uh, will help um, you know, with the detection of atrial fibrillation, which was previously very dif uh, difficult to detect in patients uh, with cryptogenic stroke. And finally, the pandemic and telemed uh, telemedicine. As we have experienced, the pandemic has brought a new era of um, virtual working and facilitated the penetration of telemedicine. One good example is the Ping'an Good Doctor app from China, which when I looked um, uh, a year ago, had uh, about 300 million uh, registered users. The telemedicine market has huge growth potential, both in Korea uh, and, uh, and globally, of course, with the caveat um, of regulation. Teledoc is one such company in the United States, which at one time had a market cap of almost 30 billion US dollars. One of the major problems with such telemedicine uh, solutions um, is, is that for doctors working in big hospitals, 
the solutions don't actually work seamlessly with the EM, uh, EMR or HIS. In our uh, hospital at SNUH, we developed our own telemedicine uh, solution, which whose server is separated from the HIS, but the system is embedded into our EMR and HIS and works seamlessly. Um, you know, when you click on the tele, uh, telemedicine button, it takes you um, to your vir virtual consult room uh, where you can click on your patients and the patients have an icon uh, on our hospital app. And if they click on this icon, it will take them to the virtual um, uh, telemedicine um, system. This is a picture of one of our doctors at SNUH doing a virtual telemedicine visit with a patient and explaining the findings uh, of the carotid ultrasound uh, with um, uh, whose PAX image can be shared real time uh, with the patient. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest challenge to healthcare is the rapidly aging society. We need to find more efficient and effective ways to deliver healthcare. We are also living in the, area, uh, at the era of the fourth industrial revolution where enormous computing power combined with connectivity and convergence can drive change and disruptive innovation. Major drivers of change to healthcare will be AI and big data, robotics and robotic process automation, connectivity and 5G telecommunications, digital sensor-based health, telehealth, and the pandemic and telemedicine. It is imperative that cardiologists in Korea and worldwide take advantage of new technologies to more effectively and efficiently deliver care to the patients in need. Thank you for your attention.